Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve spiral matrix, lead code number 54. So we're given an M by N matrix, so M rows and N columns, and we need to return all the elements of the matrix in spiral order. So what that is, is you start at the top left corner, and then you go all the way to the right, and then you go down, and then you go left, and then you go up. But we don't go up until the one again, because we've already visited that in our path. So you go up to the four, and then we take our right immediately to hit the five. So what you would output is simply the the numbers that you would visit in order in a 1D list of your spiral matrix pattern. So let's see this example here. So we start at the top left, we go right, 1, 2, 3, 4, we go down, 8 and 12, we go left, 11, 10, 9, we go up and then not up until the 1 here, we just stop here, we go right, 6 to 7, and then we're done. So again, that's just going to be the output of all of those in order. Now the way I think about this is you kind of have different walls, because if you have a top wall here, right wall here, bottom here, and left wall here, well then if you start right here, we can basically start by going right, so we'll see 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and since we are going right, and we are about to hit our right wall here, well then that's when we turn directions, and before we turn directions, we want to actually update our wall so that we don't quite go this far in the future, because you don't want to see any of these elements elements again here. So we would update our right wall to be this, and then we go down here to see 8 and 12. Okay, we're about to hit our bottom wall, so then we would actually move our bottom wall up here, because we don't want to see these ones again next time. So then we go left, we go left, we go left. Okay, we're about to hit our left wall, so we move this wall in here. We go up. Oh, actually, our top wall was in the wrong position at the beginning. So this is kind of the weird trick about this. You would actually want your top wall to be basically the first index there so that way it's set up now we would turn right because we're about to hit our top wall and so we go here and see the six we would see the seven and then we're about to hit our right wall and so we'd stop now the question is how do you actually know to stop so this kind of worked well in forcing us to go in the particular directions but how do you know when we're supposed to stop well it's a little difficult as is but if you were actually getting your output kind of as we went here you know of course you'd actually be appending these values and so you would be getting in this order here 12 11 10 9 and we just had 5 6 and then 7 well we'd have gotten all of these elements here and if you can get the length of this thing so the length of this we'll call this say s many elements well if that's equal to m times n or that's the whole number of elements in the grid if these two things are equal that means that you're done it's just a really really easy way of simply saying when we're done is when we've collected all of the elements available so this one is more of a challenge in the code and less so about the visualization. So I'll explain this really thoroughly. Now I'll let you know, this is not the best code you'll ever see here. There's definitely more elegant ways to write it, but I feel like this is the most explicit and obvious solution you'd come up with if you were to do it in a coding interview yourself. So basically we'd get M and N are equal to the length of the matrix and the length of the matrix at zero. So that's the standard way to get the number of rows and the number of columns. And we're going to build up our answer array so an empty array and we'll mark our first position of i and j is equal to both 0 0. Okay now we're going to get basically some constants here we'll get up and turn caps lock on here up right down and left so just any number you want there 0 1 2 and 3 now we just have unique identifiers for those and we can start calling them their words and we're going to start our initial direction as we're going right here. Now as we saw we wanted our above wall so I'll call that our up wall that's actually going to be equal to the first row which is zero the others are going to be just outside of the array so our right wall is going to be n so the normal last index for the column is n minus one so out of bounds to the right is n out of bounds down so down wall that is equal to m and out of bounds to the left left wall is going to be negative one Okay, then simply while the length of our answer is not equal to m times n, so while we still have elements to collect, let's do the right thing. Okay, so I'm going to write this super explicitly here. If the direction is equal to right, so if we're going right, well then that means that we want to increment j. So then while j is specifically less than the right wall, we want to answer dot append the matrix at i at j. And then we want to j plus equals 1. So that sends us over to the right, and eventually 
eventually we will hit the right wall. Now at this point, we need to update i and j. So i and j is going to equal i plus one. So that's going to the next row because now we want to start going down. And j is actually going to be j minus one because if you did this while loop up until hitting the right wall, this must have stopped once you actually hit the right wall. So you'd kind of need to go one left so that we're in bounds again. Okay, then we have two things to do here. You'd want to set your right wall is going to decrease. So we just hit the right wall. We're going to move that in. And now our new direction to go is to go down. So now we're going down. Now we just need to repeat this pattern three more times. So otherwise, if the direction is down, so if we're going down, then we do while i is less than the down wall. So we're trying to increase the i index or the row index until we hit that wall below us. We'd again want to answer.append our matrix at ij. And this time you'd want to increment i by one. Now we need to update both i and j and i actually just hit the bottom wall. And so we would actually need to move that up one so that it's in bounds. So i is going to be set to i minus one. And then we need to start going to the left. And so we need to set j to be j minus one because we just went down. We'll move it over one to the left. Okay, and we just hit our down wall. So we're going to down wall is going to decrease by one that moves it up one and the direction we're now going is equal to left. Okay, now otherwise, if your direction is equal to left, if we're going left, then we'd want while j, our column index, is greater than our left wall. So until we hit the wall on the left, we'd again want to answer.append our matrix at ij. And to move left, you'd want to j minus equals one. So that's going to the left. Eventually, we hit our left wall. And again, update i and j. Here, you would want i to be i minus one, because if you were going left here, we're on the bottom. And so you'd want to move up. And we just hit our left wall. And so you would need to go right one to get back in bounds here. It would be J plus one. Okay, you would want to move your left wall inward. So that's left wall plus equals one. And now we want our direction to be going up. Okay, finally here, otherwise, it means you must be going up. So while I is greater than our up wall, we want to append our matrix position and you'd want to go up. So that's gonna be I minus equals one will send you up. And at the end here, you'd want to update I and j which are going to be i plus one and j plus one that's because if you were going up here you just hit your up wall so we'd kind of need to move i down one and then we're about to go right so we're going to move j one to the right and we just hit our up wall so we'll up wall is going to increase by one to actually send it down and the direction we want to go is again over to the right here okay after all of this stuff here make sure you find the proper indentation and at the end here we can simply just return our answer so let me get all the code here on one screen. Hopefully it's not too, too small. Yep, not too bad. Okay, if you are to submit your cases here, I don't know why it's over here, but that is going to work. And the time complexity of this is, you know, pretty clearly we're going up until we hit m times n elements and you're getting one new element every time. So that's just going to be a big O of m times n time complexity. Definitely the best you can do because we're just exactly doing what we're supposed to. And for the space complexity, there's kind of two things you could argue for this. You could either say a constant because we are not including our output as part of the space. Basically, you could think we have to come up with our answer array. And so we are just giving them what they wanted. Or some people might say this is m times n space because you are kind of storing those elements. Either one, I prefer to call this O of one, not including the output in part of the space calculation. Okay, I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye bye.